I mean, first we have to ask, before we ask what is Confucian common sense, we have to ask what is common sense? And common sense is a, is a funny word in the sense that it seems to be kind of shallow. But in fact, when we look at famous philosophers like Plato and Aristotle or Confucius and Mengzi, these are not people who invented a world. What they do is they're archaeologists who go into the language and, and, and lift out of the language the wisdom of the ages that sedimented into language is the way in which a population lives their life, their values, their, their, um, uh, their, their hyper goods, we call them, their, 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 their most important values. And so, but common sense has a positive function and a negative function. The positive function is that it enables us to walk through our day uh, comfortably. It, common sense turns the light on. Common sense uh, em empowers us to move through a day without bumping into things. But the negative um, uh, side of Common sense is common sense is a blinder that, that common sense doesn't let you see what uh, other people see, what other cultures see. And so it has a, a negative um, uh, influence as well. So common sense is a very precious thing. It, it's very hard to change. Um, yesterday, we talked about this Western, this Greek way of thinking, this dualistic worldview. Well, for a hundred years, more than a hundred years, after Nietzsche says God is dead, Nietzsche is saying that way of thinking is no good anymore. Mm -hmm. And so for a whole century, more than a century, philosophers have been trying to think process, have been trying to abandon. They, they see that way of thinking as not simply being outdated, but as being wrong, you know, as being fallacious. And so if you think of phenomenology or pragmatism or existentialism or postmodernism, post-structuralism, all of these new ways of thinking are rejection of that old way of thinking. But even so, 150 years later, we still have this common sense. We still see the world like Plato saw the world. So it's very hard to change common sense. Um, so... That being said, then the second part is Confucian common sense. Um, Confucian common sense, from my way of thinking, really <clears throat> it be, is, is, is family. But, but, but that notion of life, tian di zhi da de yue sheng, you know, that, yeah. that, that's why fam, family is so important. You know, that family is the entry point for developing moral competence, the way that we learn to love each other is, is, is the, the way that we learn to love is by being loved. Our parents love us, and therefore we learn to love. Uh, and, and, um, and, um, and, and so the, 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 this idea of sheng is growth. And so Confucianism is all about education. Like the stereotype of Chinese people is that they're education crazy. Yeah. But education in Chinese and morality is the same thing. To pursue education is to pursue moral. That's why Chinese students see the teacher as being like a, a parent or a grandparent. You know, that um, you, you have that kind of family feeling because morality and education are the same thing. In, in America, you can't have moral education. Teachers are not supposed to teach students values. Teachers are supposed to teach students facts. They're supposed to teach students about reality. But, but values are personal. Uh, somebody's religion, somebody's way of thinking. But in China, it's, education is moral education. You know, And so Confucian common sense really has to do with not, not only um, understanding the world, but participating in the world in such a way that you make a difference, that you cultivate yourself, that you make yourself exemplary as a person, that you try to be a Junzo, you know. So Confucian, Confucian common sense um, is, is really intelligence, is wisdom, 
maybe wisdom more than intelligence. And so then the last part of your question is the, um, will AI revolution be a threat to it? It can be, you know, that um, uh, China uh, doesn't, doesn't always respond in its own best interest. For example, um, development in China happened so quickly that environmental issues became a problem, that, that the people were destroying the environment. But, but, but there are resources within the Chinese tradition, Taoism, Buddhism, Confucianism, that really say, when we think about, about He, we have to think about, it's not just money, it's also uh, the environment, it's also education. It's, that, that He is a big idea, not a small idea. And so we have to find a balance the the uh, China's a leader in AI in the world, um, but China is also moving very very quickly, and so um, sometimes the speed of development uh, can be a problem that that knowledge and wisdom get separated. So um, AI can threaten Confucianism, individualism, Western values threaten con- Confucianism. But when we look at China today, when I look at my students, uh, Confucianism is alive and well, that, that they still have the same values, the family values. 